today it's all about scalping. Uh, it's called kelp, scalping with stewards. It's, 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 uh, anyway, uh, so welcome to Hot Forex webinar. It's about intraday trading today. Five minutes, fifteen minutes, one hour, four hours, whatever it is. Intraday stuff, scalping in particular, um, and it's just like any other trading. It's a it's a mindset game. It's a psychological game. Uh, and but I've got some indicators, some uh, approaches that uh, I've used in the past. Uh, and um, some candle patterns that I like to, to, to trade from when we're doing short-term trading. So, any questions, obviously put them in the in the box there. Uh, let me just get going. So want to move. Come on, slides. So, uh, <coughs> issues with the webinar, uh, or, or the GoToWebinar software, uh, excuse me, <coughs> please uh, email us at webinars.forex.com if any questions I don't answer during the session. Or well, if there's anything you don't understand of the problem with the, the link, try restarting it uh, uh, from your end. So I need to read this disclaimer out before we get going. So excuse me. And the material here is provided as a general marketing communication for information purposes and does not constitute independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered investment advice or an investment recommendation or indeed a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information containing an indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment in Forex and CFD product is characterised by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the users are solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. And finally, this communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. So I hope that all makes sense, I'm sure it does. Uh, and uh, let's get going. So, so firstly, let me just ask a few questions before we get going, before the slides won't move for some reason. Come on, Mr. Slide, there we are. Uh, that's me, um, there's quite a few new names in here today. So uh, basically my background is in the city of London. I spent um, 20 years working for an investment bank, a retail bank. Uh, I've been trading my own money uh, for over 20, well, just over 20 years now. September 1997, I started while I was all, um, and there's a story behind that, but I won't bore you with that today. Um, I, my trading, my own personal trading, is really done on the higher time frames, principally the daily and the four hour and the one hour. Uh, but I've, I've scalped before; it just doesn't fit with my personality, which is one of the main reasons I don't do it. So, although I can talk about it and show you the, the theory, um, bear in mind that I personally very, very rarely risk my own money on sort of five minute candle patterns, okay? The theory's there because it doesn't fit my personality. So that's the one thing I'll spend a bit of time today talking about, okay? Remember, when you're trading, it's all about you. You've got this one here. This is the most important thing. You've got to know yourself, okay? Um, and one thing I learned, um, well, after a little while, not immediately, is that <clears throat> Scalping isn't necessarily for me. I can explain the theory, I can show it all, and we can. I, I, I do like trading five minute candles um, for a bit of fun, um, usually, uh, and I, I, I use a particular candle pattern, which we'll, we'll talk about as well. Um, but that's it for me. My serious money is on my daily time frames. The one hour system, I've got a very, very simple one hour system I'll talk about today as well. Uh, which I, always, I obviously haven't explained very clearly because lots of people are asking questions about it, and I'll go through that today as well. Uh, but so let me ask you guys out there: uh, Do you are you am I talking to a, a, an audience of scalpers that have tried it and failed? Uh, people that think it's it's for them, uh, or uh, somebody that's completely brand new and has never traded before, and, and th this is definitely for them. They've tried it and they're successful at scalping. So, any feedback on those? Question. So, is this for you, or is it just something you may be interested in, or you've heard about it? Uh, okay, so a few people keen they like it. So, those of you who um, like it, why is it that you like it? Is it the speed? Is it the you know the amount of trade you're doing? Um, is it the fact you close things at the end of the day, or at the end of the you can get you know get your get your pips in you know first five minutes of the day and go go and do something else for the rest of the day? Somebody says it fails. Okay. All right. So anyway, as I say, so just bear that in mind. I, I'm, you know, I'm a technical analyst. I'm a market analyst. I've been around a long time, but scalping isn't me. Okay. So re remember, when you when you're um, uh, you know trading yourself, you, you know, uh, or you listen to people like me on the on the internet, or you're watching YouTube videos, or you you know whatever it is, you you know, 
look at these people's uh, history. Are they, are they actually doing it for themselves or are they just very good at teaching or do they want to sell you a software package or do they want to sell you a training package? Uh, there's usually uh, some sort of motivation. Uh, you know, I've got nothing to hide here. Uh, I, 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 I trade my own money. Uh, I'm quite happy doing that uh, and I'm happy to, to speak to as many people as possible who want to uh, be successful as well and move on. So. All about scalping timeframes, uh, timeframes, discipline, energy, patience. Today, I'll talk about the steps you need to take, whatever time frame you're trading on, particularly intraday trading. You've got to be disciplined, got to be patient, regardless of the time frame you're trading. Uh, and again, I speak to many scalpers that are some of the, are, are some of the most patient people you would uh, come across. And that sounds like a, a contradiction in terms. But even when you're trading short time frames, you still need patience and discipline, and perhaps even more so when you're trading um, shorter time frames, because you've got to be in and out very quickly uh, and be able to change your mind and accept being wrong a lot and just push, push. Okay. A lot of people get attracted to it because they think it's it's quick, it's speedy, and it, it, and you can make quick money. And it, it, it's a very odd. I always find that very very odd. Uh, approach. So basically, are you designed to be these, these one of these type of people? Are you this type of person? Are you designed to be intraday scalper? Most of us find it very difficult to switch, switch from being a bear to being a bull. Okay, and as a scalper, you've got to be able to do that. Whether you whether you're using an automated system, an EA, or doing it manually, you've got to be able to flick your mind quite quickly, and that is quite a difficult skill because we're designed. Um, you know, over millions and millions of years to be a certain type of personality, a certain type of person. And I would say, those of you who heard me talk before, I, I'm a, a, a very much of a strong opinion uh, that this business is a psychological business and it's all about managing risk and if you can manage risk, accept losing a lot, you can be successful regardless of the time frame that you trade. So, are you designed, you've got to ask yourself those questions, so switching from a bull to a bear very quickly can be very difficult. And these are the sort of questions, you know, this might all sound a bit boring, but these are the sort of things you need to ask yourself before you press a buy or sell button, before you even look at trading, before you even look at any candle patterns or line patterns or whatever it is, price patterns. Okay, so, as I say, it's very much about you trading. Uh, it's not the market, it's not your broker, it's not, you know, it's not the latest DA you might have bought, or guru, and certainly not anybody, <laughs> it's certainly not me. It really is about you. So ask yourself, are you designed physically, mentally, physiologically to be a scalper, a short-term trader? Can you cope with these quick in and outs? Because some people just can't. They're not designed, they want to be able to think a bit longer, let the trade run. Others need the energy, the excitement of in and out, five pips here, five pips there, happy to take a loss, happy to take a win, do lots of trades during the day. Others, intraday type traders still, not necessarily scalpers, but they're, they, you know, they're a bit more disciplined. They're, they're disciplined, they're looking at a bit longer time frames, maybe an hour or 15 minutes, and you know, they're only looking for two or three key setups during the day. If they don't happen, they don't take them. But if they do take them, they'll, they'll, they'll take those trades. Uh, and that's all that sort of discipline. So you really have to look at yourself. You know, are you the, are you the, uh, the um, jellyfish here just floating through the ocean? Have you got the ability and the, you know, the, the ability to press the buy and sell button? We all have that, but can we really jump off? Can we really jump into the ocean of trading? Or are you the, the, the lone swimmer that's like plowing his own course in, in the higher time frame? So all of these things, also, it might sound all a bit mumbo jumbo, but these are the sort of things, these are the things that are absolutely vital to any uh, success in trading. Okay, the technical stuff, anybody can learn. Anybody can learn to look at charts, anybody can learn the, te the technical analysis, anybody can start to understand the news and the nuances that come out of the news. But the key thing is all about you, so it's about yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror, have yourself a plan. Why are you doing this? When are you trading? When can you trade? And fit it in around your lifestyle, around your personality. And, and you'll find a time frame that fits and, 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 and matches you. And the beauty of Forex, in particular, it is a very liquid market. Uh, it can be very, very volatile, and that's what we want. We want volatility because volatility allows us to go short or to go long. It doesn't matter. We don't care how we make our money. If we go up or down, it doesn't matter. Then that's all the market does. Don't overcomplicate it. The market goes up, 
it goes down, it goes sideways, and that's it. It doesn't do anything else. You make a profit or you make a loss. That's the only two outcomes that you can have. So obviously you can close it flat, but most of the time you make a profit or you make a loss, and that's it. So the rest of it is all what's going on in your head, accepting all those things that happen, and they happen every single day, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And nothing's changed in the market for over 150 years uh, since the markets have been, you know, men have been, or hundreds of years since men have been trading, and women have been trading, um, commodities, equities, uh, forex, it's all the same thing, day in, day out. Uh, and it's just about different time frames and different um, profit and loss profiles and that's all it's about. Keep it simple. So, how do you see yourself? Are you a scalper? So, some key definitions of scalping, it's, you know, it's a short term, um, looking at entries and exits very, very quick, in a matter of seconds sometimes. Uh, it makes, the idea is to make lots of small trades but frequent trades, typically a minute, holding it to on, on one minute or ten, maximum 10 minute, 15 minute uh, time frames. Um, but a lot, lot of people I speak to, a lot of people I see have this idea that because it's fast, it means it's, it's going to be profitable. I, I really ha can't get my head around that. <coughs> Excuse me, but more, uh, you know, you know ten, I don't know, seven times out of ten people I speak to are talk about scalping. Excuse me. They, 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 this assumption comes across that it's quick, it's easy, and it's profitable. Uh, I don't know where people get that idea from. I don't, I don't know if it's something that the, the industry markets are scalping as quick and profitable or what. I don't know, but it, it's you know, it's uh, I find it very strange. But it, it, you know, it's just like any other discipline. You've got to be the master of it. So you need because it's you're you're you're, you're at it very quick. Or there's lots of things going on potentially. It's fast paced and it needs lots of attention. You've got to concentrate quite a lot so it takes a lot of attention it can take a lot of trades to, to, to come on not trigger or you take them or you don't take them so you've got to have attention fully on the time that you're trading um, so whether that's a, a fixed like two hour time frame or you're going to trade all day waiting for certain 15 minute candles to trigger or 10 minute candles to trigger but what you really need you need the active session which is basically the london session so we need this high liquidity tight spreads this is London and uh, the morning session in the UA and it all dies off 6 o'clock GMT, 1700 um, GMT, the market closes and uh, we have the thing called the London fix where the prices are fixed for the day at four, around 4 o'clock London time. So London session is the key session and if, you can, if you're around and you can be active and your brains are alive during the London session, you know, uh, that, uh, typically 8 till uh, this, even this is a bit late, but say 8 till 1800 GMT, that's the session you want to be trading if you're going to be a, a, a short term trader. If that is like when you're supposed to be asleep, you need to then ask yourself, um, if I'm going to be up trying to trade this high liquidity tight spread session, um, am I going to be fast asleep or do, you know, do I need to change my lifestyle? If you can't, th perhaps think about trading different, different types of time frames and, and, and scalping you might want to do it, but it may not be for you because you can't fit it in with your lifestyle. And I say, as I say, discipline, stress, all parts of trading comes up with all types of time frames, but particularly the short time frame can be very stressful. And lots of discipline continually stick to the system. And obviously, with any trading approach, you've got to stick to your system. Uh, the other key thing about obviously the shorter time frames is you 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 really need a good con connection to your broker. Uh, high reliable internet connection. Uh, we have a, and lots of brokers do, not just us obviously, we have a dedicated BPS service so you, you can you can run your EAs, you can be on 24 hours a day uh, if you want to be, if your system wants to be trading that time. But remember this really is the London session. All for it, you know, this is a, a, a I'm sure you all know, you've heard these numbers before, but it's a five trillion dollar a day business Forex. Um, obviously, most of it's done between the big banks and us as retail traders are a very small percent, percentage of that. Uh, but the key session is the London session and, and lots of the liquidity, lots of the money, the deals all go through the London session to, uh, to, uh, trading time frame. Uh, so even the afternoon session in New York, uh, Forex dies down quite significantly, volumes die down quite significantly. I've got a little, I've got a little chart um, I found it on uh, Bloomberg uh, that shows up quite uh, quite graphically. So, 
approach, you've got to follow the market. So if you're going to trade intraday, you're going to scalp, you need to be looking at the, the tighter spreads. And so these are the seven tightest, eight tightest that I look at if I'm trading, uh, certainly on the 15 minute time frame or the five minute time frame, we look at these seven or eight with these really tight spreads here, because uh, you want these highly liquid pairs, you know, and, and they tend to uh, trend the best as well, or they tend to follow uh, patterns, or they f tend to follow the technicalities uh, better as well, these tighter, highly liquid spreads. And remember, sorry, highly pairs, I should say, remember the key thing here, the spread can hurt. The spread depends on the liquidity and obviously the time of the day, and that, that varies, but the spread is your cost of your business. So when you're trading, you need to have treat it like a business. Treat your capital with respect. Treat your trade, your open trades, with respect. Always manage your risk. Always make sure you know when you're going to get out, that you're not going to lose too much. Keep your losses, it's an old cliche, and I say it every single day. Keep the losses small and let the profits run. And, and unfortunately, our mindsets as human beings is the opposite way around. I haven't got time to explain that now, but uh, watch the uh, Mind Games webinar where I go into that in a bit of detail, but it really is all about uh, managing your risk and keeping a, 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 keep, keeping a business-like head on it uh, when you're trading because treat it like a business and you'll get the, the, the returns you deserve. Treat it uh, with disrespect and the market is brutal. The market is um, lethal. It goes up, it goes down, but it will take your money off you uh, very, very quickly. Um, the only other note I would make is, you know, because we're trading these, sometimes you end up trading, you know, correlated trades. So if you're long the euro and short the, the yen, that's, you know, you're, you're on the same side of the, that, that dollar trade. So be careful you're not overexposed. And that happens to me quite a lot on the daily time frames where I'm over, I tend to be, sometimes I feel a bit overexposed to a particular uh, currency, but that's just the way my system works up on the daily time frame. And, <clears throat> Uh, and it, that's just part of the risk of trading as well. So look at these tighter spreads, um, and look at um, and look at make sure you're not too overexposed to correlation. But if the, the trades there, take it. If it looks probable, take it. So intraday stuff, uh, short time frame. Look at liquidity. Like I said, watch the session change as well. They they can be your you know they can be your pips for the day. Uh, London opens. You tend to get big spike in volume, big strong candle. Is the direction or is it just the market makers trying to shake out weak holders and, and, and move us up when, we, when, it, when they really want to go down? But that, that suddenly pans out. So the opening of London, the opening of New York, key session. So here, 8 till 1600 certainly is the key tight uh, time frame you want to be looking if you're going to be a scalp, you want to be in and out. Intraday traders, see how quickly the volume, this is the volume, this is liquidity volumes in per hour from the uh, night group put this together for Bloomberg and see how the Asian session, it dies, even the London, the afternoon, late afternoon in London, uh, the afternoon session in New York, the volumes, liquidity dies very, very significantly. Um, Asian session quite steady, London is the key one, but after this time here, evening time, London time is, is when it's all very quiet. So this is where you want to be looking. And the other key thing, obviously, if you're trading intraday, you've got to be aware of the big uh, fundamental news items or a, any news item sometimes can you know change uh, suddenly shake your five minute chart uh, make it look very very silly if something comes in much on it uh, unexpected to what it, the, the, the the market is expecting so have your daily have your calendar up there be aware of it have it either plotted on your chart or have it stuck next to you be very very aware of certainly the big red high impact events so on this day, whenever it was, March the 7th, it was the key event was the GDP coming out of the Euro area at uh, 10 o'clock GMT. And the other thing to remember as well, make sure you've got your time synced. You know, you don't get your, your times mixed up. Um, many traders contact me many times, having got, you know, especially when the hours changes, the, the daylight saving time changes, uh, get out of sync. So make sure every single day you double check all of that. Because remember, it's your money. It, you're, you're risking it. You owe it to yourself to make sure all these things are in place before you press buy or sell, before you even open your trading platform. Be aware of what's going on in the day. What's the key event of the day if you're going to be trading today? What is the key, likely key movers of a particular currency pair or a particular asset or a particular commodity if you're trading commodities as well? Anyway, so, so 
first thing, what is happening today? What's the market doing now? Are we going sideways? Are we in a trend? So that you know, that's very, very, you know, can be quite clear. So click on your charts, open your charts. Are we, are we, are we looking for trending indicate, trending day, or an oscillating day? You know, also again, it's the types of indicators we use. Usually use both of them, combination of them. I'll come on to them all in a minute. Uh, so one's up, one's down. Uh, well, on the uh, day, uh, on the one hour time frame, I always have the pivots, the day, the pivots, the, and the resistance and the support areas on there again. They're all in there. It's an asset you've got there. It's a hot forex pivot uh, um, little tool you can just add to your chart. Um, gives you the, the keys, these key pivots and resistance and support areas during the day. So moving averages helps you with a trending market. Oscillators, RSI, stocks, MACD for when we're going sideways. Okay, and a combination of all three or four uh, when you're actually using the trade, depending on the time frames that you're using. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, start at the higher time frames and, and drill down. So obviously, if you're intraday, you, it'd be good to know what the, where the daily, what the, which way the daily is going. But you're not really interested in the daily or the weekly trends. Uh, that's too far away from our from our you know five minutes, thirty minutes, and fifteen minutes. These are the ones you want to be looking at. Look at the support and resistance at these time frames. Put them perhaps on in different colours, and then drill down into the into the five minute. Trends so, or the 15 minute chart if you're looking at even up at the one hour. So, get the time frame that fits with you. So, if you've, if you've only got like an hour or two to trade, you're going to try and practice this or, or trial this uh, scalping approach. Look at the right, the hour is our higher time frame. So, that's I'm not interested in anything above the hour because I'm only going to be I'm going to be trading at the one minute and the five minute time frame. So, you get your one hour charts up and put the support and resistance on the one hour chart, and then you drill down into the, the five minute and the one minute chart and so be it uh, if you you know if you're going to sit there all day well perhaps you want to look at use it the one trade off the one hour time frame so you're going to you're only going to look you're going to look at say five or six uh, assets or ten assets or whatever it is but you're going to just going to check every hour during the day so you're going to you know every you know once eight eight times a day i'm going to check each of these these assets to see what's happened uh, and that's how I, you know that's how i trade on the one hour time frame so it's all about you and all about how you want to approach the trade and the technical stuff. I say I can teach you that. You can see that. You can learn that uh, anywhere. Uh, but it's applying it and making it fit with you and your personality. I know I keep repeating this, but it, that's absolutely fundamental for me. And I, I'm afraid too many people in my position, or teachers or trainers, just talk f focus too much on on the technicals or the technicalities of it, and without the um, spending sufficient time on the, the mindsets that, uh, that really drive this marketplace. So look at the time frames you're looking at. So, you know, lots of different types of indicators can help you. It's moving averages, the, the average true range I, I like a lot. Uh, the oscillators for getting in and, and triggering actual positions and then have a disciplined system that, that we need one, two, three, four, five, six things to happen or one, two, three, four things to happen and that would trigger a trade whether it's short or long, where's my target, where's my stop loss, that sort of discipline, and then just automate it. Automate as much as possible, but don't use a robot. Don't get a, a, a you know, make it as, as, as boring, as, funda as, as, uh, as, as, as simple as possible, and get used to doing it, and just rinse and repeat, I call it, you know. See the triggers, has that happened, has that happened? Yes, yes, we'll buy. Yes, yes, we sell. And it's as simple as that. Um, uh, if you can't watch it all the time, again, if you can't watch it all the time, think about perhaps automating it a wee bit, but it's really very much about you. So let's have a look at some techniques and some indicators that I use, I've used in the past, that I, things that work for me, things that haven't worked for me and that sort of thing. So let's just go through the indicators. So on, um, let's start the one hour time frame. My one hour system is very, very simple. It based, it's based on uh, principally the five and the nine exponential moving average okay that's the key there the key that's that's step one okay so if the five for instance if the five i'll obviously bring you a chart up in a minute if the five crosses from above the the nine from a below so it's underneath it and it's crossing above up under from under the five is under the nine and it's going up through the nine that's a possible long position and if the five was above the nine and comes below the nine that's a possible short position so that's step one on my, this is 
This works on the 15 minute, it works on the four hour, but I use it mostly on the one hour time frame. We'll look at some charts in a minute. Uh, I've lost, what time is it? Um, half past already, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna speed up a bit. But I then, the next step for the one hour system is the Bollinger Band. So I'm looking for a cross of the midline here. So this has happened already, that five and the nine EMA have crossed one way or the other. And then I want the, the, the second confirmation uh, is the uh, five minute is the sorry the, the second confirmation is the crossing of the midpoint the midline of the Bollinger Band which happens to be the 20 period simple moving average but anyway that's irrelevant it's just the midpoint of the Bollinger Band. Uh, Bruce is asked here what moving average do you use on the five minute on the five minute chart Bruce I don't use any moving average to so I'm trading down the five minutes I use the Heiken Ashi candles I have the line chart and I'll come on to that in a minute uh, and it's that. Um, I find the moving averages are too slow moving uh, for um, uh, for that time frame, the five minute. If you are, uh, I would simply, if you're going to want to look at moving averages, I would put a five moving average or even a three moving average on it and just use that as like a pivot point. So if you're below the three, for let's say the three EMA on a five minute chart, if you were below it, only look to sell if you were above it look to buy and that would be the only that would be my sort of trigger point okay thank you for your kind comments there no, no. anyway let's, let's crack on so that these these two here the moving average crossovers the EMA exponential moving average and the Bollinger Band the midpoint the 20 uh, is the two triggers to decide whether I get in long or short on my one hour time frame and I say it works very well on four hours and 15 minutes as well but we'll look at those we'll look at the 50 minute one in a minute well we'll look at them all in a minute on the on the lower the lower the time frames I go I want to I want a bit more because because moving averages are great when you're trending but as we saw before the market only trends about 30 percent of the time even the, even the forex market so most of the time it's sort of going sideways so that's where these guys come in the oscillators come in so things like the RSI the MACD and the stochastics the slow coming to the, so slow moving stochastic. Um, so these are the settings I would use, or I do use, or have used, down on the lower time frames. It's 15 minute, um, and even five minute, Bruce, if you want to look at that, look at, look at at play with these sort of levels. So I have the RSI set at seven. Uh, the issue here is you get, a, you get a few, obviously lots of false movements, so we're over the 70 quite a lot with the, uh, the, the rules when we're down at seven. The MACD set at five, eight at three. Uh, so we get much more volatility, much more movement again. And the stochastic set at uh, 532 or 533, it doesn't really matter, 533, 532, something like that uh, for stochastics. You don't have to use all of them, but on the charts I'm going to use, it, you tend to use one or the other, or if you want to put them all on, put them all on. Now the issue that comes uh, with them, obviously the more indicators you put on a, a chart, the more chance you have of suffering from uh, analysis paralysis. So, as um, Anna, I, mean, I think I think I heard Anna Cooling saying that the first time. But anyway, uh, it, 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 but you know it, it's been said many many times before. So the more stuff you put on, the more crazy it can get, and the more complicated the chart gets. Uh, and certainly, uh, I was I you know when I first started twenty years ago, I was all stochastics. I like stochastics when I first started. I don't use them as much these days. But I remember tweaking my stochastics all the time, thinking there was a holy grail if this if this was just a six or if that was a four or that was an eight or and just messing around with it for ages and ages and to be honest it's not worth it the mt the beauty of the mt or one of the big benefits of the mt4 platform is that the, the standard settings are usually what most of the market is using the mt4 is that is the dominant forex uh trading uh um, um, uh, platform uh, um, uh, charting platform so most people um, both pros you know people that just start out tend to use the default settings that come out tweak them a wee bit like this one I, I tweak this to 2.5 on my Bollinger Bands it comes at 220 and 2 standard but I've always used 2.5 that's all that's just something I've always done and that's why I've used that um, but uh, the standard settings are usually fine I don't waste time messing with these settings. All I'm saying is for me, I found that these settings for the RSI, the MACD and the stochastic work quite well when we're down uh, to the short scalping time frames and the five and the nine EMA work really well uh, for me, my, my approach on certainly the one hour, the four hour 
uh, and even on the daily time frame, if you want to use them up there as well, but uh, my daily time system is a bit different to that. So that's the settings. Uh, hopefully that's quite straightforward. Everybody, anybody, everybody and anybody can do that, I hope. Uh, any questions? I've been talking for half an hour again already. Nope. Right, let's crack on. So this is my one hour setup. Okay, this is an example. So what we've got on here, the yellow lines are some, just some triggers. So we've got what I've just said. So this is the one hour setup. So this has got the RSI 14 and the ATR 14 for creating the target. So what we have here is the, the green lines are the Bollinger Bands. So the midpoint of the Bollinger Bands is this green line here. So we're looking, this is a second one look for a break. But the two key lines are the yellow and the blue. Okay, so this is the, we're looking for a cross of these two. So it doesn't matter what, what, what it is, it doesn't matter, we're looking for a cross and when they're moving, when they're trending, that's the key thing. So here, there's been a cross here. So the blue has come from underneath the yellow and the candle on the, after that cross is also closed above the, so that would have been a long trade triggered there, which wouldn't have worked out. Okay, so we've been going down, it looks like it's gonna turn around. The moving average is across, the blue is crossed above the yellow, just, as you see, it hasn't really crossed with any significance. Uh, and the, the candle is also closed above the green line, so it's a, a long trade which didn't work out. We'd have probably been, oh, actually it might, it might, the target would have been probably somewhere, like, this is an exit chart, it's better if I use this on, on live charts rather than these just uh, time trends. Anyway, so that probably would have got to target then. The stop loss would have had to would have been down here around the turn. That's the other rule for this one hour system. Okay? And the target is the ATR, so the ATR would have been about, I don't know, 10 pips. So I don't know if that was I can't work it out unless this fits. But this is this is the setup for the one hour system. So we've got the five and the nine EMA, the uh, the booming average is set uh, the Bollinger band set at two and two uh, twenty and two point five. ATR at 14 and RSI at 14. Don't really use the RSI in this one, but just to give me a heads up of what's, whether we're up or down. So at, th at that point it was about 30, so it looked like it was still going up. It was, it moved out of this oversold, so it looked like it was going up, so it was good enough. Um, trigger there, there's another one that's failed. That one did fail, didn't it? So it's, again, that's, it's crossed there. It's over the midpoint of the Bollinger Band and it hasn't gone up so another one, that one definitely would have failed so that's not happened, that's not happened at four o'clock one but there, that one, that one being a successful one, this one here, so this is morning, we've been trading this one so again the yellow has come from above, um, sorry hang on, no it's gone up, no it hasn't, no it's, 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 it's just, uh, blue's just gone over the yellow there, it's come back under, that would have been the, uh, the entry there because we were already under the 20 period, that's a double second entry there because um, we were significantly under the um, uh, midpoint of Bollinger Bands and then a third entry or second third entry would have been here uh, because what I do with this system is it's a trending system so once we've gone once it's triggered it, it can run and keep running but I, what I don't do I tend to put the so if that had been the entry the target would have taken me down to about here whatever that I I'm going to use some real charts because this isn't very clear on here. Uh, but the entry would have been here, the target would have been here, and then I would have re-entered again here because the trend is very much moving down now because we've got the 20, the 9, and the 5 all nicely aligned and moving down. So I take another, whatever the ATR is, another, that would have been 8 pips on that one hour trade down there and I would have taken that. And then we turned around at the bottom here and it looks like it was trying to move up here. But obviously we haven't moved back over the the midpoint of the Bollinger Band, so there isn't another trigger on that one yet. But that's the standard one hour setup. So if you want, only want to look at your charts once an hour, again, I would look at just looking at the high uh, frequency, the high liquid, liquid um, uh, 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 pairs. I, I look about 12 on the, on the one hour, and again, I'll show you those in a minute. Let's just have a look at, so this is another example of it. Actually, this is probably, I should use this one. So this is an example of a, of a short trade. So the exponential here, so one, the exponential has moved, has crossed. The blue has crossed below the yellow here. Um, uh, didn't actually get, it was, it was a timing thing. Yeah, this is overnight. So it crossed off here. I, it crossed under the green uh, line, the midpoint here at the close of that candle, which was 10 o'clock. So the entry was there at number three. So that's the one cross. Then we've crossed the 22, we've crossed the, the uh, midpoint of the Bollinger Band. Three is the entry. Target 
is whatever the ATR was at the time, and it was 2.5, this is a gold trade, so 2.25, target is 5, 2.25 from 32.3, takes it down to 30, um, 30 or so, it's a big round number, I just added, rounded that up, and then within a few hours it actually ran off the target. Stop loss up here above the term, so the, there was some support here at 136 on that one, so that's the one hour approach. Um, Another, excuse, another example there going long. Uh, I won't go through that because the time's cracking on us top too much as usual. Um, so that's the one hour time frame. So that's the one hour time frame um, uh, intraday um, stuff. Right, 15 minute, I add a few more indicators. This is where I add the oscillator. So on the 15 minute time frame, for intraday trade, scalping on 15 minutes, I have the same setup. So I've still got the five and the nine EMA crossing. But I then, I reduce my RSI to seven, like I've just shown you. I use the, still use the ATR as, as, as potential for setting targets and the turn, systems the same. I then have the MACD set at five, eight, and three, and the stochastics at five, three, and three on here. I'll say three and two, it doesn't really matter, three and three. So see how that goes. We'll, we'll look at these in some live chats, but the principle's still the same. So uh, we just got some added, uh, added help this time with the oscillators. And as you can see here, we've crossed the zero line. That hasn't quite triggered, but that might have been enough to get you in. The RSI was nicely rising. The stocks have already crossed and, and moving up. So that might give you a heads up before um, the moving averages. That's a ex classic example of the moving average lagging. So you could have been comfortable if you were using the, your stochastics here, your, your, your oscillators here, stochastics and your MACD gives you a bit of a heads up before the moving average cross. So you got in on this move rather than this break here of the at the midpoint of the Bollinger Bands there. So that one's there and that's taking you up. And we've got another, looks like that was about to go there, wasn't it? The, we're moving down here. This is about to move when I put this together. So this was looking like this was about to go short on this one, on this one here. So all the, all the oscillators do here is just give you a bit more help when we're not going with strong trends. Here obviously we've got a strong trend and we just follow that trend down. Don't, and the oscillator, you know, MACD's moving down, stocks are moving down, so we're all in, convert, we're all moving in the right place, we're all, you know, going down, RSA's got a bit overbought, but we remember down at seven, so uh, the fact we're under 30 is not, perhaps not that significant, we kept going down and kept going down here, so, um, again, obviously the beauty of the shorter time frames is your targets are smaller, your stop losses are smaller, and you're potentially generating more trades. But again, it's all about that mindset about whether you can cope with all these trades triggering all the time. Okay, and finally, my five minute, probably pure scalping approach is this one. This is the Heiken Ashi candles. Uh, I've got a whole webinar I talk about Heiken Ashi candles, but I, if I'm gonna trade for fun on five minutes, I really like the Heiken Ashi candles. And the principle, the, but not going in to explain that I can actually do in great detail, but principally you're looking for uh, no wicks um, on, on a on a on a on a high can actually candle to create trends. So again, here this is a down because we've got a big red. The red is down, white is up. Uh, we've got wicks but up and uh, above and below. Don't do anything. If we got what you're looking for is no wick. So here the trend had started there. That was the confirmation there. So you get in on the completion of that one and then follow trade that down. And trade it. What I do with when we're trading, I can actually tend to use a, a trailing stop loss uh, and have the stop loss above the tie of the previous candle and just dab, dab that down. And it's a really quite a sexy, simple. And for me, um, the lower the tie, when we're down here at five minute and one minute, this works quite well on one minute candles. Well, if you want to get down to that sort of level, um, it, it, it takes a lot of the, the noise away. You know, the news, the noise. Um, it, 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 you know, a bit of manipulation sometimes. It's just very, very clear, okay? Clearly in a downtrend, in this, you know, five minute time frame. Uh, but where was it clear? Well, it didn't become clear till here. And off we go, uh, a bit of sideways action there. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll come on top, we'll grab a couple of these, all these live charts. So that's it, that's, that's my really approach, my, my scalping, my intraday approach. One minute, uh, one hour, sorry, one hour, 15 minute, five minute. They're my three key intraday approaches. Uh, the four hour one is, but my four hour approach is very, very similar to the daily approach. Uh, but they're the, 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 the three strategies I use on an intraday basis and when I'm you know, scalping uh, intraday for these three, type, uh, three types of approaches. 
just a couple of this is from uh, a, a blue sky put, put these sort of, uh, put these notes up but it, it's very very valid you know um, risks and dangers obviously the news the fundamentals can be quite key here um, uh, you know how you know, like I said always have your um, calendar up make sure the key fundamentals robots I'm not a great fan of robots I know um, um, there's lots of EAs out there lots of them are, are quite effective and do work but in the long term uh, they've never really worked for me I'm no fan of, um, that's, that's been useful and the whole market is designed or the, the net the, the way that the Forex market works in particular is robots uh, although you know lots of computers obviously driving and algorithms are driving the bit uh, the trading now um, you know be very careful when you're buying them you know downloading them you know especially on intraday stuff uh, and remember the spreads are the ones that, the thing that kills you that's the cost of your business so be very very careful some EAs are very uh, are not very comfortable with with the spreads if they suddenly move uh, or a bit wider uh, question um, uh, would you recommend using the 200 moving average when scalping on a five minute time frame the 200 yes I well I have the 200 period up by default and obviously in the, in the lower time frames you don't often see it but uh, it's certainly on my one hour time frames and the 15 minute time frames yeah I mean yes because it's still a significant support level and resistance level so yes uh, you, know, you can have that you won't see it very often um, but you know I, I've seen some strategies where you have a five period and a 200 period that's the key cross so you, you, you know it's a major, major cross when, when those things happen. They don't happen very often, but uh, it, it's a key, key level of 200 moving average, absolutely. For a person who's a beginner, would you recommend having indicators on their chart or start using a naked chart using support and resistance? Um, well, if you're completely new, um, obviously start with a demo account. Uh, but before you risk any money, watch my um, Mind Games webinar. Uh, and understand yourself. I guess I spent a lot of time talking about that today. Uh, understand yourself. But as far as indicators are concerned, find a time frame or time frames that work for you, and use indicators um, to um, understand them. You know, so have a combination. Never just use oscillators. Never just use trending indicators. Use a combination of indicators um, that you know give you a, a, a rounded picture of what's going on. But remember, there isn't a, an indicator that works all the time. Uh, some work on on high on some time frames better than others, but most of them work across all time frames quite well. Um, you know, I, I really like the ATR, the average true range for, for for either stop losses or targets because it's, it just seems probable to me, and that's why I use that a lot. Um, so, you know, the other thing about a naked chart, just using the price action, is it it can train your brain sometimes quick more quickly than using indicators, because with indicators they become a bit of a crutch. You're waiting for the moving average to be crossed, or you're waiting for the, the zero line on the MACD to cross, you're waiting. So it's good for patience and discipline, but you're, you're trusting that thing that, because that's happened, X, Y, Z will happen. But remember, the markets aren't logical. Uh, they never are, have been, and they never will. Um, so, you know, the beauty of using perhaps just pure price action and looking at it, it trains your brain a little bit quicker. Sometimes you see those support and resistance levels more naturally. And certainly, I, when I'm putting my support and resistance lines on our targets or whatever, I tend to do it manually and then add something like a Fibonacci afterwards just to see if that corresponds with anything I've put I more myself. And quite often, you do see that. And that's sometimes that's just a... Uh, again, another little crutch that helps. Oh, actually, yeah, I, I, this sort of makes sense to me then. But certainly, a blank, a naked uh, a chart is, is good for training the brain at the beginning. What's the best pips to use for scalping? I don't understand what that means, Kasim. What's what is the best pips to use for scalping? I, I'm not quite sure what you mean, Kasim. How can I view the hourly liquidity and how does the spread affect our trade? Well, spread is absolutely fundamental. Okay, remember the spread is the same whether you're uh, holding a trade for one minute. I'm saying typically it's the same, whether you're holding a, a trade for one minute, five minutes, or five hours, or five days. Um, obviously, the price of that, the, the cost of your to your trade, if you're only looking to make five or six pips and the spread is two, is much more significant if a two pip spread and you're looking to make 200 pips. Really understand those, again, it's, it's just like anything else, you know, treat this as a business. Understand the cost to you of running your business and the spread is principally the cost for you to trade to take the trade because every time you take a trade whether you're going long or short you're always out of the money remember that as well i'm sure you all know that 
but the, you know, the, the, it's always red. We're always in the red because the spread takes in the, in, into that account. If you're looking at scalping, what you want to do is be looking at our, our zero spread account. It, well, it's from re zero spread account, we call it a zero spread account, but you know, it's very, very tight. It's the best spread, you know, it's a tight spread, sometimes very often zero spreads, but obviously the cost of that is a commission for actually using that, that, uh, that service. So again, weigh that all up. How many trades are you going to have to take to, to, uh, to how many pips are you going to have to make to, to justify uh, using the, 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 the uh, cost of the, the commission or you know, all those sort of things. So, you know, it's your money. Look after it. Um, Kazim, I mean the pips target the scalp. Right, target wise, Kazim, I, I'll use the ATM. Let me just, let me bring up some charts. Actually, let me just finish the. What time is it? Let me just um, ten minutes. Let me just uh, finish these slides, and I'll bring up some live charts. What do you say about the pound Swiss now? Can we scalp? <laughs> um, I don't. Uh, um, somebody's asking about the pound Swiss as a scalping pair. I wouldn't use the pound Swiss as a scalping pair simply because the spread's a bit wide. And uh, it doesn't move. Uh, the, the Swissy, um, I tend to, um, I do trade it at one hour, uh, but I typically four hours the lowest time frame for the Swiss for me. Uh, um, but it's not one of those key movers. But having said that, it's been moved, it's, it's done quite well for me on the one on the one hour platform as well. So pound, but pound Swiss, uh, I'm not sure to be honest, uh, Gerard. Um, anyway, so robots fundamentals. As I, I've just mentioned all about spread, so you know you've got to be you know watch the spread. Uh, either use a zero spread account, or a fixed spread account. Uh, be careful because that's the cost of your business. Technicals, you know, technical, you know, it, it is the approach when you're scalping. That's why uh, automating it. That's why robots, computerizing things, algorithms uh, have, have become so popular for these shorter time frames. But be, you know, be careful about stops. Be careful about. Um, liquidity and spreads, all the stuff I said at the beginning, that's the key key thing. Okay, let's just, let me just bring in the, the charts and live charts while we've got our last 10 minutes. So, uh, so I'll show you what I do or what I would tend to do. Let me just, so, see if this, right, so this is my, this is the, um, um, let me just fix this, hopefully you can see all this, that's tiny. So these are the nine charts uh, I would use. Um, even sometimes I'm saying the Swissy, I tend not to, to be honest, but uh, it, it's here. Uh, but it's the dollar crosses. This is the Heiken Ashi uh, five minute candles, and I'm looking like here. This, this, uh, this is clear, strong uptrend in the last 10 minutes for the dollar, uh, the, the dollar yen. So, one, no, no, no wick, it's just starting, candles getting bigger in here, and off we go and running. Other way around here for the, the pound. Um, Sort of uh, slowing down, going down. Candle uh, wick disappeared in the indecision. We were white, we were going up. We changed color, wicks at the top. Completion here in on the completion of this candle, run it down. Appearance of uh, a wick both up and down, still red, still down. But I, I would either close or reduce the, my lot size at this point. Um, uh, so I, you know, maybe it's big, few lot, uh, lots up as percentage of lots reduce it as we've got down to this level. This seems to be a bit of a support, but maybe just hesitating and moving back down again. That's how I trade, that's as, that's as much detail. If I'm in and out for five, on, on these short time frames for these five minute, uh, five minute time kills. Uh, lots of questions going in here. Uh, Warren's asking, what's the average stop loss when scalping? I tend to put my stop loss too tight. Well, that's, you know, the issue, I always say with an all trading, the stop loss needs to be where the stop loss needs to be. Here on this five minute chart, Warren, uh, uh, with the Heiken Ashi candles is I tend to use, if I'm, I'm going to, if I use this, I'm teaching people on music uh, intraday stuff, I tend to have the tra a trailing stop loss following this down. So the stop loss on this one, for instance, it, so this was, this, let's just bring this one up here. So. Um, so we've been going sideways here. This is the first big indicator. That's a big indicator. So here, that's that's me in here because it's a big candle, and that's continued. So I've got in here. That's still positive. And my stop loss is down here. So my stop loss is now here, and this one's a questioning. Of, mm, we're still white, but we've got wicks above. Them. This the trend might break down. So hang on. You know, I my stop loss is still here. I've, I'm still in, and it's the trends then opened up. So I bring the stop loss. 
up to here now and just step it up as the um, as the as the trend starts to unwind. As you can see, that the, the, by the third candle here, it shrunk, and my stop loss would have been if it's there, I'd have been stopped out on that one. So we've gone south, nothing's happening. Perhaps got back in there, and there's it's still a little bit of a wick there, uh, but it's 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 quite big, so it was still going up. So we got back in here, uh, trending, 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 nicely, nicely. Mm, question mark. So we've had a good run there for 20 minutes. Big tall wick. Mm, mm, question mark. Uh, lower my lot size, mm, mm, get out there. So that that sort of thing. How I trade that, Warren. Um, can you write? Oh, hang on a minute. What's Ola saying? Here? Can you write out those candles' names? Need to search. Ola, yes. It, this this lot, this here, this is the five minute. This is called the Heiken Ashi. Look up, look on our webinars. I've got the Heiken Ashi um, candles. They're called. Um, actually, let me show um, indicator list. Where's it gone? There. Can you see that? That's how you spell it, Heiken Ashi. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Heiken Ashi candles. And you just, so you just load this onto your chart when you're setting it up. Watch the uh, Heiken Ashi webinar, all if you're interested in Heiken Ashi candles. Okay, you need to understand Heiken Ashi candles well. They're not like normal candles, they're, they're, they're modified, so uh, you've got to be careful. Because you can see here, the price, the real price is down here, but the candle price, the candles up here, so you've got to be careful that's one of the big one of the disadvantages of hiking actually candles but uh, uh watch the webinar and if you've got any questions uh, email me so uh, anyway that was uh that was hiking actually that's a five minute one uh let me just go through these what i've got so my profiles here so this is my five minute one uh my intraday this is what i use more often but let's actually let's go up in, in logical terms so the 15 minute ema macd stochastic spread are these eight here uh, so, because of, now then, because again, it's all about screen size when you trade these intraday. So, because we have, I've now got four indicators below the the charts. You've got to be, you know, you've got to bring them up. But you know, if you're doing this systematically every 15 minutes, you can see. But again, you can see this has happened here. So we've got to zoom up a bit. You know, a key cross there. So that's you know trend. So we've got a trend going down nicely there. There's that. There's that cross. There's that blue. Uh, the blue above, below, there we go, we're in, and what's what's everything else saying? Well, we've gone to, with zero lines, gone, looks like it may be going down, stocks have already moved, so that's a good one, that's, let's go. So, you know, trail lap down, and the target is our, is the ATR, I always use the ATR, so like here, because we're on 15 minutes, only four pips, but get in, what's happened, four pips later, where was that, that was 122.28, we get to 24, are we still, is the trend, sorry, 122. 24, where was that? Hang on a minute, this. 122, 22, so 18 is, is, is 120. So 18 was, was be during that candle there. So we got to this candle, are we still are we still moving down? Well, yes, what we've got, we've still got the, the, the moving averages now are nicely trending down. We've got a nice move with 29.5, so that's saying it's still going short. RSI saying, well, we've gone a bit oversold here, so that's saying watch out, potentially. MACD's strengthened the 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 uh, um, um, the, clo the clo on the close of that cancel. We got our target there. So are we going to go short again? Well, yes, because uh, the only question is the RSI is dipped under t under 30 there. But the R the MACD ca uh, uh, histogram is getting longer. That's good. And another question, perhaps it might be the stochastic there. We bottomed out. We may be turning around there, but we're still under. We still see how the blue still under the red. So that's still good enough to go. And the moving average is still. So it's another another potential four pips there. So we run that down again, and then just keep going. You know, that's another one there. That's good enough. You know, the histogram's bigger. Uh, stochastics are looking up, but you know the the RSI now is getting a wee bit overbought. Um, because oh, sorry, got even more overbought now. We're down at 30, 16. So that's looking, mm, maybe, stochastic say, mm, maybe. So would you take another one there? Uh, the moving average is good enough for me to take another one, but it's saying question mark that. So, and that's, you know, we, we retraced there and that sort of balanced up there, that started to turn, but we've still moved down. So we're still under. Question mark there, because we were now back into the moving average. The uh, histogram shortened, RSI is still under 30, but it started to pick up and, and the, the, the stochastics already turned. So, that's how you use them, basically. Oh, I'm on mute, I'm on mute. Oh, sorry, I don't know how much of that. Hopefully you saw the camera.
God. Uh, hopefully you saw that. Basically, this was the first entry, uh, and the next entry would have been four, it's because the ATR is four pips. Uh, I don't know how much you guys didn't hear then, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, trading it down, and that's what, the, so the moving averages are trending, moving down, and the, and the MACD is moving down as well, the, uh, the histograms are getting taller. Uh, the only question mark here is the RSI, because we're overbought, but you know, okay, and the stochastic turn around. So these two are saying, watch it, MACD is still moving down, and the trend, and the uh, moving average is still moving down. So that's good enough for me, basically, because I, you know, weighted wise, I'm a trend trader, and that's what I can see developing here. So I'm, I'm with the trend. Obviously the question is, when we move again, break, 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 and that's the key break there over the over the. Um, uh, but it's late, you can see there. So we finally, but here we've crossed. We're over the zero. RSI is rising, uh, and we're up, and we've got another perhaps four pips out there, and it didn't work. It, so we've gone sideways, sideways, sideways. But then we've broken, we've broken. We're under there. The blue's gone under the yellow. That's our entry there. RSI is now falling. We've got eight pips. We've got more pips. We've got eight pips on that one. Oh, it's a bit choppy. So we've gone up. We've gone down. That's a nice entry there. Uh, MACD's dipped again, or about to dip under zero. It's gone short. Um, uh, stocks turned here already. So stocks was the early, was the first indicator there. Stock gives you that one. So there you go. Uh, that's the first indicator. That's the second moving average. Then and off we go. And off it's run, and then run again. That's a nice little trend. So that's that's how I use. Uh, on the 15 minute time frames and up on the one hour time frame before I run out of time completely um, and that's so that's let me just show that so on the 15 minute I'll tend to use these eight tight crosses so the main uh, so euro yen pound Aussie uh, gold to an eight got to be careful with gold because of the spread um, 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 pound yen uh, euro pound and euro yen they're the ones that I trade I'm not saying they're the ones you should trade but they're the ones I trade on this 15 minute and on the one hour, I'll use about 12 crosses. So my uh, one hour profile hasn't takes the uh, oscillators off uh, and um, I'm more the trend, I'm more just looking for the moving averages, but it, all, it brings on the daily pivots as well. So the moving, uh, no, where's it gone? So the inter my moving average crossover, the one hour time frame is this one. And these are the 12 or so charts. I'm just, let me go, these are the 12 or so, so I'll, I'll look at Bitcoin at the one hour, uh, gold again, um, oil sometimes, not, not uh, oil, and you see oil can be very sideways, but it's been very interesting recently. But uh, this is, so this is, tends to be just the moving average, there's not many, the only oscillator on here is the RSI, and it's back, it's back to its 14 setting, but I use the, uh, I still use the ATR at 14, and the ATR is the key, um, the key for uh, setting targets, and the stop loss, um, as, you know, you all know, I'll say it again, has to, oh, there's too many lines on that one, let's just um, get rid of that. Uh, not, not, not pound yen here. So the stop loss has to be where the stop loss has to be. So here, that would have been an entry there. Uh, the moving averages were already over the 20 there and we've dipped down, we've crossed, that's a nice entry there, the latest one there. That would have been an entry. And the stop loss, because we've dipped down here, would have to be down here, so my entry, there now this is a, one of the criticisms of this approach so the entry would be there uh, stop loss needs to be around the latest term which happens to be that fractal low as well which is a bit odd because because we're under the key two and somebody else about 200 period here we've got 200 period here on providing support so entries there and the target from this approach is that is the uh, ATR so it's uh, 0.27 what's it point, uh, 0.28 from here so 152 uh, 03 plus 28 takes us up to here. So you can see the stop loss is much, much bigger than the target. But I have not an issue with that simply because I understand the probability and the fundamentals of what I'm doing. Because when this triggers, remember we're above the 5, we're above the 9, and we're above the 20 period moving average. Our target is only the 14 period ATR, which is uh, the probability of that being hit is quite high. And that, so I'm expecting this sort of energy in the market, this turn, to give me this impetus to start running again. So that would have run up, what did I say that was? That was um, uh, point, point 0.28. So point 0.28 takes us to uh, 52 uh, up here somewhere. So yeah, that would have been taken out. And again, see the trend is still with us. So another one there. And again, that would have run up to there. Um, 
probably would have perhaps even taken the third. Well, perhaps it depends whether the, the third, second target was hit because we'd have this down candle. Although we're still uh, moving up. Um, sorry, we were still moving. Obviously, we don't know this is going to happen, but we were still moving up, but we'd moved down. So mm, that was a, quite a significant down candle. Might have waited, and then that would have put me off probably this one. I've already had two successful trades, it looks like. And then that pivot high would have plotted there. That fractal would have been coming in after this one. So it was looking that this may be rolling over. So I've been looking for us go short again. And that's, and then the next one would have been the short, that would have been that, that short trade there. Um, another pivot high, but it's lower than the previous two. Uh, it's broken down. It's quite a significant break. So that, you know, that would have been another entry there to take lower. And that doesn't look like it's going to have played out that one. At, uh, at, um, at two o'clock, that one looks like it may fail, but again, see that the trend is a bit, it's not clear, it's not nice and strong, the, the, the movement in the moving average there, they're all, they're together, they're congested, there's no gaps between them, there's no air between them, uh, so we dip down and it's turning up, so that one, you know, my stop loss would have been probably around about here, so that one looks like that one would have been a loser if I'd taken that one, but that's the one hour system based on the, uh, the moving averages as well. So thank you for your time today. I hope that was useful. Um, as I say, uh, it's, it's very much about you. It's very much about uh, your approach. Uh, and um, I'll have you, you know, I, I have, you, I have you got the physical and emotional uh, ability to deal with, with these short-term time frames, the, the, you know, the, the ability to switch your mind very, very quickly. The, obviously, the indicators and the rules try and help you, but it's still you pressing and... and um, and, and, buy, and, and the buy and the sell buttons each time, okay? So if you haven't got the uh, app, do download it. Uh, if you've, um, I don't know if I've got the uh, maze webinars, I don't think I have. No, I missed them. So any questions, please, please email me at webinars.4x.com. Follow our analysis on the analysis page. Follow what we do on uh, Facebook as well. There's lots of stuff gets put up there these days. Uh, Stuart Hot Forex, Cowell, friend me. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll add you on Messenger and add you on Facebook as well. So any questions before I go about scalping or trading in general, uh, stop loss targets, um, if it's for you, if it's not for you. If anybody's still here, I, I'm bored you all silly. Or confused you silly. Would you like to see more webinars like this? Would you like to see more live trading? Would you like to see more technical webinars? More about psychology, more about approaches, more about strategies, all these sort of things. We like, we really like your feedback on that sort of thing because we're here to help, you know, because if uh, we're delivering uh, what you want, um, you keep coming back. <laughs> it's the main thing. So live trading, uh, which amounts, I don't understand Mohammed that question, which amounts to moving on? I don't understand that question, Mohammed. I'll, Mohammed, I'll send you an email afterwards, okay? Uh, Bruce needs assistance with a trading plan. Okay, strategy says Sabina. Uh, yes, more of it says Kazim. Strategies of moving averages. Um, which amount of moving averages? Mohammed, I'm not quite clear what that means. Uh, well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email, Mohammed, okay? Uh, cause I quite, don't quite understand your question, okay? Thank you for your time today, everybody. Uh, um, um, and um, and this is a, and this, oh, hang on, there are some more, more questions coming through, so. Can you explain a bit more on stop loss strategy? Yes, it's very, my stop loss strategy, uh, Abraham, is very straightforward, or I think it's very straightforward. Uh, and I'll say it again, and people think, oh, you're being really flippant and offhand. I'm not, it's just, it has to be where it has to be. So what you do, actually, let's, bring, oh, this is a bit of a messy chart, let's find a, uh, actually, let's bring up the daily one, but some uh, chart trades we took today, or oh, last night. I haven't actually posted them on, but so this, let's, let's, let, let's, let's, let's use this one. This is a good example, okay? Strategies and line trade with Hans. Uh, okay, let me just, right, this was, um, there we go, let's assume it. This was taken um, yesterday. This was a, a trade that I got stopped out on. Uh, this is the pound Aussie. Uh, I took it, I went long again last night. So this was this, can everybody see this? Hopefully. Uh, so this was a short trade. It looked like it was going to be... Um, no, it wasn't. What am I talking about? Um, oh, I've, I've taken the lines off. I can't remember now. Um, was it a short? Yes, I was going short. I can't remember where the target was now. Um, yes, this... Sorry. So on the 18th here, I went short from this candle here because it had broken the midpoint of the Bollinger Band. looked like it was going short. 
uh, and it, first day it was in money, second day it was still in the money, third day, mm, and yesterday uh, it turned around completely and I, and I got, uh, so I entered here uh, and I was out in the money for two days and I've turned it this around, I've, I've closed it for a loss, so I've lost that amount, can't remember how many pips it is, but I've now gone long because it's now continued to go back up, you can see it was in an uptrend, it's continued to go back up. So to answer your question, Mohammed, here, this trade I've taken this morning, the yellow line here, the stop loss is down here because that's where it has to be because that's where the market last turned. Okay, it, clo it couldn't close below this level for one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it hasn't, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten days. And that, that has proved a really strong support level. So that's where the stop loss has to be. Okay, so what you do, Mohammed, then, so that was my entry here last night. That's where the stop loss has to be. I know my target's only going to be there because this is a continuation trade. My rule is half the half the ATR, so the ATR was 126, so I, the, uh, the target was 55 pips, and it's already hit that today. Uh, but so again, it's one of those things where there's, there's a big stop loss, and not a, the target's not as big. However, because it's turned around, I'm happy to take that. So what you need to do to make sure is that, that if that stop loss got, gets hit, like this one did from the end when I was going um, short and I got stopped out there. So that the yellow line was the, when I closed this short trade here. So that was my loss. That loss there was much less than, than 1% because my stop loss was way up here when I closed it early. So you may need to make sure that this distance here in monetary terms or in PIP terms needs to be a very small amount of your account, you know, one, two percent maximum. Um, Otherwise, you end up emptying your account, and that's how the stop. So the stop loss, it's never a fixed amount of pips. It's never uh, 20 pips, 15 pips, or so much percentage away from where I get in. It's all to do with how much money, percentage-wise, is the, is, the, is the distance, and it has to be where the market is telling me it has to be. So if here, this long trade here for pound CAD from yesterday, the stop loss has to be here at 182.15, and that's that's my interpretation of what the charts are telling me. Okay, so that's the answer to your question, Mohammed. I hope. So it's quite simple. Uh, strategies, I got in late and missed the first part of the webinar. I also missed others were able to attend that also. Carlos, um, uh, have a look on our YouTube site. They're all up there, all the latest recordings. Have a look on obviously our past webinars as well on our website and they're all there. What's your thoughts on scalping for pipettes on the five minute? Carlos, pipettes on the five minutes. Uh, it's too, too much stress, too much risk for me. I don't do it. Um, uh, if I'm trading five minutes, usually for fun, it's usually uh, with the Heiken Ashi candles, and I've just gone through all those. So, Carlos, have a look at the Heiken Ashi candle webinar as well. That's about the, the explanation on the five minutes as well. I don't have to use Heiken Ashi candles, but I, if I'm going to trade that down at that time frame, I tend to, that's what I tend to use because it, it clears out a lot of the noise for me. Okay. Any final questions? Because I better go. Okay. <laughs> no problem, Carlos. Okay. All right, thanks everybody for, for attending. Uh, join Otto tomorrow where he's talking about emotions in trading and uh, we'll see you all again next week for some live analysis on Tuesday. Okay, take care everybody, thank you. Uh, Mohammed, uh, time for scalping, it needs to be on the, the London time frame. okay? Like I said at the beginning of the, of the webinar. So basically 8 a.m. to uh, 1600 a.m. or 1700 uh, PM, sorry, uh, GMT, the GMT time, so the London time frame is the best time if you're going to be scalping. Okay, thanks everybody, bye-bye.